how do you decide what would make for a good painting? Wow, that's <laughs> you start with a thousand dollar question. Because <laughs> there it's, I know you work off of photographs. Yes. And yeah, I imagine you yeah. take a bunch of photographs mm -hmm. and then go through them. Yeah. And so, yeah, how do you, what is the decision making process? Well, I select the work, you know, according to what I've done before and before and before, and it's like a, a stratification, mm -hmm. you know, of, uh, of a process okay. in a way, you know. So, uh, some decisions are taken more intu intuitively, mm -hmm. and some others are like, it's more obvious to me, like it's more formal, more okay. radical, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so you sort yeah. of look at it and say, this one, this will do some sort of have some sort of pattern that you're interested in following and... Yeah, well, sometimes, you know, I want a break also. Okay. And I want to jump onto something very I mean, radically different from what I was doing mm -hmm. before. And before, I might have been going for a year or two in a very slow, kind of smooth okay. progression, you know? So, mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a combination of things. It's both rational and emotional and, you know. Okay. Um, for roughly general, how many photographs do you take to get the one that you're going to be turning into a painting? Oh, it's a big ratio, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't know, it's... But I take less and less pictures, okay. you know, recently. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because my work also is becoming more and more um, uh, autonomous mm -hmm. from, as a painting practice, from mm -hmm. the photographic source. Okay. The photographic source is still there, mm -hmm. but... Uh, it is uh, not as, the work doesn't lean on it as much as in, you know, maybe 10 years, even mm -hmm. five years ago. So okay. sometimes now I use an image that has just like two lines mm -hmm. in them and still I work from that photo to start the painting. Okay. But then after that, it's like almost, uh, it's only painting, you know? So uh, I would say that, you know, I've got boxes and boxes of photos. It's all like classified according to years, locations, mm -hmm. and stuff. You know? Okay. Yeah. So I have a big bank of images, mm -hmm. and I return to some other periods. You know, like mostly I work from very recent photos because they correspond to what interests me uh, now mm -hmm. in my practice. Okay. You know, but sometimes I go back to something I took even like 15 years ago, 20 years mm -hmm. ago, and thinking, oh, yeah, I remember this image, maybe that it's, now is the time to, you know, turn it into a painting to use it, you know? Okay. So, I don't know, it's maybe one on 50, you know? Okay. One painting, 50 by 50 photos mm -hmm. for like one okay. painting, or 75, I don't know. Like okay, it's a lot. I, I yeah. figured it was a lot. I didn't know if it yeah, was something like yeah. five, or whether it was something like 50, or even Yeah, five. well, you start, you know, with the, uh, the contact sheet, mm -hmm. then you edit, then you get some images printed. Mm -hmm. Then from those images, you know, like I put them on the wall in my studio and I select them. Then I made another selection of images mm -hmm. that are gonna be uh, turned into slides because I use a projector. Mm -hmm. And then from those slides, then I choose. Okay. You know, so it's like, it's like, Mm -hmm. <laughs> funneling it down and down yeah. and down and down and down. Const constantly editing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I might be making, you know, from 12 to, well, I used to make like 8 to 12 paintings a year mm -hmm. because they used to take a lot more time in the process to make. But mm -hmm. now I make maybe, like I, for this year, you know, like with the show here, with these two mm -hmm. big pieces. And also some work I did for uh, for a show that uh, opens next week at Tony Blouin Gallery. Maybe I made 25 paintings. Oh, that's okay. You know, and that happened also the year that I did the show at the Fine Arts Museum mm -hmm. two years ago. And I did also a show at Rennie the same year, mm -hmm. so I don't know. Maybe it's because also my uh, choice of images is uh, leans towards more uh, minimalist mm -hmm. or simplified, you know, mm -hmm. pictures. Mm -hmm. So there's less labor involved than when I used to make things like uh, in the first rooms of the, uh, of the exhibition. Mm -hmm. you know, some paintings that took like two months to make. So you make like, as I said, yeah. you know, like very less work. Okay. What kind of camera do you use? Uh, I used the uh, Minox mm -hmm. until about an analog camera. Mm -hmm until about uh, seven, eight years ago. 
And then I switched on to uh, digital, mm -hmm. which is like another process completely. Okay. It's much faster, of mm -hmm. course, but also like for to get the result, you know, mm -hmm. like it's not like the slower pace of, you know, getting yep. the, you know, the field yeah, the developed yeah, get, and everything, da, da 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 you know, so I get, you know, like after I come back from a trip, I download the images and then I see like hundreds of pictures okay. and then I get them printed. Mm -hmm. Still, you know, like I go to a, mm -hmm. a lab that yep. prints them in like the kind of snapshot size. Mm -hmm. and so that, that stayed. And uh, it kind of changed my work a bit, you know, because I was already influenced still using analog images by the technology, you know, changing mm -hmm. images and stuff because of what I was seeing all around and also of other painting practices, you know, that were being influenced by that mm -hmm. too. I mean, it's unavoidable. It's like when camera, when photography appeared in the 19th century mm -hmm. and painters already started to uh, to use it, yep. you know, to enjoy that, uh, that tool. So uh, there's something about the color that also I was interested more and more by more luminous kind of aspects of images, more bright colors and stuff and all that. Also, there's like a, a process that happens using the digital images that, you know, the snapshot is like an interpretation by that machine, by that, by that technology that makes colors very strange. And I like that artificiality that I was already working on, mm -hmm. as I said, using analog pictures yeah, more and more. My focus has changed. Mm -hmm. You know, like at uh, the beginning of the show, the first pieces that you're talking about that are darker uh, were done that way because I wanted this kind of uh, filter over the images mm -hmm. that give them like a, a kind of mood, mm -hmm. you know? And also they were more focused, those paintings, on the image, on that kind of location. Mm -hmm. And the uh, use of representation was much more easier to interpret and to understand because there were much, much more elements that help mm -hmm. you to recognize either a location or an object in uh, those pieces, mm -hmm. whether more and more that you know, with the years I progressed towards, or my work to progress towards the images that were more minimal and more simplified formally. And although it's still a work that deals with representation and uh, with objects, the objects that I choose to uh, photograph and then paint after that are very minimal in their form. So they become very ambiguous as as how do you recognize this? Mm -hmm. What is it, you know, exactly? And uh, what kind of painting is that? Is mm -hmm. it an abstract painting or is it a, a painting that represents an abstract piece of work, mm -hmm. piece of art, you know, and things like that that okay. I found interesting. Um, yeah, what's the lighting like in your studio? It's, uh, it's very bright. Okay. Yes, yes. But I use like a combination of natural light and mm -hmm. electric light. It's a bit like this because it's a combination of natural light, which mm -hmm. is colder, mm -hmm. and electric light, which is warmer. So that's why we wanted to balance okay. the, the light of mm -hmm. the shoe, the lightning of the shoe using those uh, blue yep. cold gels. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Okay. Um, In fact, there's like three sources. There's also neon. Mm -hmm. There's neon here, and electric light like floods and yeah. stuff and then the, the ones with the trails. So how do you decide from the photos the size of the painting? That comes again, you know, with years of experience, mm -hmm. you know, of, uh, you know, to trying to define what is going to be the right scale for an image, you mm -hmm. know, translated into painting. It just happens. Okay. You know, like, uh, most of the time I know right away, you mm -hmm. know, intuitively because it's a process that's been going on for such a long time mm -hmm. in my work that uh, I don't need to really question it yep. very much. But sometimes, sometimes I also, uh, I check with the projector. Mm -hmm. And it, in fact, that's the first step towards the making of the work. You mm -hmm. know, it's, I take the slide and then, you know, I, I select an image that's been photographed mm -hmm. in slide format. I project it and then 
you know, usually the, the canvas is already prepared, you know, mm -hmm. but if I don't know sometimes on the wall and then I move it, you know, back and forth and mm -hmm. I decide, does this really look good, mm -hmm. you know, that large or maybe it's going to be, uh, you know, maybe it should be a bit smaller okay. and this and that. Mm -hmm. so okay. The projector helps a lot. It's like the first step, you know, like it's the uh, like immediate result, but it's not painting. Mm -hmm. It's just like the image and the size and all that, you know, it's the source. Mm -hmm. But it, for me, it's like the equivalent of doing a sketch. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I use this tool, you know, and then I jump right away. As, as soon as the image, the size is determinated, mm -hmm. I do like a quick drawing. And then after that, it's like from the paper mm -hmm. photo, the print. Mm -hmm. And then I, uh, as, as I go on, it's more and more autonomous, you know, without With, having to look yeah. at the source. Okay. The color matching, stuff like that, because I find your colors are very, very strong. Mm -hmm. um, Especially in the new work. Yes. Yes, yes. Again, you know, it's, it's linked to my, uh, what interests me, you know, like in painting. And it, it's part of a process. Mm -hmm. As I said, you know, like the early pieces, pieces were uh, very uh, dark, you know, because I wanted that kind of mood, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, as much as I was working from analog photos that were kind of dark themselves, you know, like I wanted mm -hmm. to push that further mm -hmm. by using these, uh, these colors mm -hmm. and these different uh, kind of, uh, how do you say, like a dispositive, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And, um, I don't know. It's an interesting question, color, because some, sometimes it is very closely linked to the source image I'm going to use, you know, and sometimes the source image is just a start, you know, and then I have to invent things, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, in the case, especially of the, of Gate, of mm -hmm. this piece, there was a lot of invention mm -hmm. because I really had to discard a lot of elements that were in the, uh, in the source. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, in fact, the first and last panels are like surfaces. They, 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 they were done from photos of granite surfaces mm -hmm. that were either in the shade or in very bright lightning. Mm -hmm. And this granite was kind of like purple, pink, gray. It was very hard to, uh, to interpret, you know? Mm -hmm. So to find that color, it was a work on color. Okay. And then it finally became something completely autonomous, but then it had to match the rest. So the rest was influenced by that. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, that's another thing maybe I could say in the process, you know, like I always start my painting by applying a monochrome ground that is of a color that I select from the photo or an interpretation of the mm -hmm. photo, which I decide, you know, like to focus on to give the dominant light mm -hmm. and mood of that, uh, of that, point, of that painting. Mm -hmm. I remade the paintings. Oh, you remade the paintings? Okay. Yeah, because we could not go them for uh, mm -hmm. those in those two uh, cases. Mm -hmm. We couldn't go the paintings. Okay. Uh, one was untraceable, mm -hmm. the cosmos, the flowers, mm -hmm. and the tire painting that was uh, in many space. That was uh, a no, you know, mm -hmm. like it's somewhere. It's in New York in okay. some financial institution, okay. and they decided that they didn't want to. It was too much trouble, mm -hmm. or I don't know. Okay. So, because uh, Marc Lampetou, the mm -hmm. curator of the show, and mm -hmm. myself had uh, made such a precise choice of image, of, mm -hmm. of paintings, of works, to create this kind of large installation that was this, the concept you know, mm -hmm. behind this exhibition, it felt to me that, uh, especially in the case of uh, Le Cosmos, mm -hmm. which was part of the uh, reconstruction yeah. of this installation mm -hmm. I made in 99, there was no choice, you know, like uh, there was no question, I had to, I had to, to redo it. Mm -hmm. 
And then for the uh, second one, we were looking at like plan, plan B, plan C, plan D, and uh, the best solution was still the plan A. Okay. So I decided again this, you know, mm -hmm. to make the room as perfect as okay. possible, I'm going to redo the painting. Mm -hmm. But in both cases, they change because of the, as we were talking about color and mm -hmm. the way that the, the light and the color in my work has changed over the years, those paintings were much darker and kind of colder, you yeah. know, and they warmed up, you know, like uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. And also like the the cosmos, the, uh, the flower painting was much more blurry. And technically I was, uh, I had a hard time to make that painting at the time, and it showed in some areas, whether this one is like super, like super slick, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, technically I had uh, a lot of fun redoing it. And it's also uh, perkier mm -hmm. than the original one. And you, you see that when you look at the rest of the works in those uh, three little rooms. They're kind of like, uh, there's a soft edge to like the point of contact between the shapes in the paintings. Whether in the cosmos it's very sharp and mm -hmm. the colors are much more contrasted. Mm -hmm. But it's been, it's also, the, it's a painting that I did from a photo of the, the first version. Mm -hmm. I didn't work from the source I used oh. to make the first version. So. Uh, Every, everything, every formal element mm -hmm. that was, that is in the original version is on the second one, mm -hmm. but it's been interpreted, interpre interpreted, mm -hmm. <laughs> interpreted, <laughs> interpreted mm -hmm. differently. Mm -hmm. How did you decide to become a painter? I'm sorry? How did you decide to become a painter? Well, I was always uh, very interested, very kind of fascinated and uh, attracted by images. You know, when I was a kid and looking at history books and all kinds of stuff like that, dictionaries with lots of pictures and then, you know, like, uh, I was uh, focusing on these uh, was this Le Petit Larousse, you know, it's like a little yeah. dictionary that had uh, plates with uh, reproductions and colors of different periods of art history, you know. And I was like looking at that and already like being like six, seven years old, quite fascinated by that. And one thing led to the other, you know, then it was like, uh, in, in like, uh, Painting classes and stuff like that, you know, in primary school and especially in high school, you know, I became more and more interested and then I started to read on different periods of art history, you know, and things like that. And one thing led to the other, so it's like it's been a long fascination mm -hmm. with painting. I, uh, when I started to make actual paintings without the help of like this, like theatrical kind of installations, I um, used uh, images of buildings, but uh, that were borrowed from books, you know, dealing with 19th century photography in France, especially. And so again, it was images dealing with history and uh, architecture, but in a different way. And again, you know, like one thing led to the other after that. Uh, there, was a, there was a period when I used uh, my own image self-portrait series that I worked on for about five years where uh, there were still like framing devices that I was using in this, in this series as in the installations and the other paintings I was talking about before but um, 
And then when I started to work from snapshots, you know, it was uh, always of photos of uh, either objects in spaces or spaces that were like deserted, abandoned, or uh, banal, as you said. It's kind of places that uh, you overlook, you know, or you walk by without really paying any attention. And I said, how can you transform that kind of very banal space, you know, into our object? into something interesting that's going to catch your attention and that you're going to, you know, stand in front of for some while and look at it and, you know, and that's like the process of transforming these images into paintings. It was like uh, the challenge for me at the time. What, what caused the switch from the installations to the paintings? Uh, well, the installations were uh, a kind of step towards my... Uh, how could I say my uh, come on this is apprendre à peindre how to learn how to paint you know it was like a stage one step towards that mm -hmm. and it was a step more loaded with an iron extent maybe you know than, uh, than now you know so it was a very different approach and uh, I guess I needed that kind of approach at that time to get more acquainted, better acquainted with painting, you know. So it was, it was kind of uh, ironic, almost destructive kind of work towards history of painting and painting in general, you know. Well, uh, it's not that things are missing, it's like things were chosen mm -hmm. by Marc and a bit with you know, my help, you know, and some of my suggestions, but uh, Mark uh, wanted to make an exhibition that would take as a departure point the work that I do now and to, to question where this work comes from, you know, like, so we decided to uh, stop at 1994 or to start the exhibition with 1994 onwards until now because that's when I started to work with, with snapshots. And this is the kind of process that I'm still using now, although the images have changed, as we said, you know, and my process also has changed slightly, you know, and slowly. The work that was done before that, because I started to exhibit in 1983, so almost 30 years ago, we, did, we decided not to go that way. That would be the way like of a traditional retrospective with, uh, you know, every period represented mm -hmm. and uh, said no, Mark said no, 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 you're still too young for that, you know, like later, another point in your life maybe, but, uh, and I'm much happier to have done this kind of work. I did a survey show with, uh, curated by Laurier Lacroix about 10 years ago that was a, a very different experience. It was a much smaller show that was um, originated by a university gallery, Chabot University Art Gallery. And um, so it was like almost 20 years of work, like here, but on a much smaller scale. There was like maybe 30 works in the exhibition and uh, much smaller works. So there was like maybe like three self-portraits, two of this, three of that, you know. And uh, so there was like more jumps in the exhibition, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in a way, like that exhibition, this exhibition here takes off a bit where the previous exhibition left, okay. you know. It's, a, it's part of a slow process, okay. you know. We also no, I think, no, I think that the exhibition uh, explains or, or it shows that slow mm -hmm. shift in yeah. my work, you know, quite, quite well, nice. I found, you know. Mm -hmm because uh, it's that shift also that interested uh, Mark you know, in the painting, in the work. One of the things that interests him for this exhibition, beside the, uh, the, the, the installation aspect of my work and also the uh, use of uh, images depicting exhibition spaces. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's, like, it's more, like, um, more like focused on a detail, mm -hmm. almost from an older painting that's been like blown up mm -hmm. and that would look like a recent work in a way, so everything was there before. It's just that now it's much more like focused on. Oh, it's uh, Louise Lawler. Okay, it's an American artist. Yeah, and I, I got it. Right. And the painting represents a corner of a wall painting that she did a few years ago mm -hmm. that I saw in New York at the Metro Pictures. Okay. 
and um, that was also part of an exhibition that I curated at uh, Concordia University. That was uh, sh the show. That was the show uh, off the wall, and uh, where I invite and I had invited artists who were dealing very quite closely or less closely with uh, the uh, the wall, the presence of the wall in their works, and. Uh, so when I saw that piece by Louis Lawler in New York, I, saw, I took a series of photos, a lot of details, you know, and mostly like the lower part dealing with this, the, the floor of the gallery mm -hmm. and reflect the, the reflection of that part of the piece, you know, like onto the floor, which is something that she does herself very often in her work, mm -hmm. where she takes fragments of um, artworks, but in either like at Sotheby's or uh, at collectors, and so in the context where they are shown. So it was like a, a Louise of a Louise. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> but I didn't want it to be too literal, so mm -hmm. I thought it was funny to uh, title it just Louise, mm -hmm. you know. When Mark was telling me how uh, important that uh, installation, that exhibition I did in '99 was um, was uh, for him in his uh, construction of the exhibition here, at first he had selected almost all the paintings that were in that show, and then I had the idea of uh, recreating the installation. But uh, and he uh, he agreed; he thought it was uh, a good idea, you know. But uh, then. Of course, it's in the museum, so it's more abstract. The space is on a different scale. There's like these three small rooms with lower ceilings and a different light, you know. But like on, the, on this wall here, there would have been in the apartment a large, uh, a large door mm -hmm. opening onto a balcony, you know. Like so, it would be there was this large opening giving mm -hmm. on. Parc La Fontaine and then downtown Montreal and all those things are missing and I like this idea that it's only like a white wall that is the presence of the uh, of the the museum of the space you know and uh, so the, these apartments these three little rooms are like objects within the space and you although it is a, a recollection of that installation it's also like mm -hmm. a, making sure that we don't forget that we're still in the museum, although there's like a shift of scale. Yeah. That, that, that shift of scale is something very dramatic. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I would say, I would say. And, but then you come out and you move into like another period of my work mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and, but you see links with what was at the core, you know, of mm -hmm. this installation, like within other paintings near, nearby and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it was quite, kind of a, like kind of a luxury to be able to, to do that, yes. you know. It's only like a museum uh, setting that can offer you that kind of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the monochromes. Yes, yes. The yes. Um, are those from uh, photographs as well? No, oh, I no. I don't think so. No, no, no. Okay. No, I don't know if you've seen some of these works before, but for the last 20 years I've been making uh, on the side of my principal practice, you know, like dealing with images and representation. Also small paintings done with the leftover pigments that I used to make my uh, paintings. Okay, so it's a way of That are photo based. Using everything. Yes, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like the, the, the light, the color is there, but it's, uh, it's left as a trace, you know. And I make many, many of those, you know, mm -hmm. so they become, you know, I can, I can make 60, 50, 60 uh, a year, you okay. know. 
So uh, those little paintings, when they are grouped, they represent, you know, my use of color and light, you know, like in a specific period, but also uh, the way that it's applied, uh, it shifts through the years, you know, like for a very long time I used the palette knife, mm -hmm. which was a process that I was using to um, build up the surfaces in my self-portrait series. And then I was making these small little studies, you know, of surfaces that became, again, autonomous paintings, you know, mm -hmm. like it's a, it became a series that took its own path, you know, mm -hmm. and I showed the first uh, selection of 100 of those paintings at uh, René Blouin, the small uh, room at the time. Mm -hmm when he was at the Belgo yeah. in 2000 and I made a few other pieces, you know, like using groupings of uh, such paintings mm -hmm. and uh, finally in, 19, in uh, 2009 I did uh, an exhibition at René's of only works like that mm -hmm. in the large and the small room. So they, they are becoming more and more paintings, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, and uh, as the year comes by, go by, you know, and also um, in this new series that I'm showing here, which is like the most recent uh, manifestation of that kind of, uh, of, of process that I've been uh, doing, the, um, the use, the process that I use is very closely linked to the way that I use depiction of light on surfaces in my larger paintings. So uh, it's like the, the, the line between those things that I do on the side and my, my major production mm -hmm. gets blurred more and more. So uh, that was interesting that uh, Mark suggested me to choose to show like this series instead of, instead of another one, you know, like because it's more closely linked to the new work and then therefore it corresponds more to the uh, concept behind the exhibition. You know, it's not like, you know, when you read, you know, uh, the history of Impressionism, you know, and things like that, and there was like this group of artists. You were talking about Michael, you know, like, mm -hmm. who I'm very fortunate to know as a friend, you know, he's a very wonderful artist, you know. So there are like sometimes things like that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, people were telling me about Lincoln, you know, for mm -hmm. example, also who's going to have to show here to, uh, after me and uh, he was an amazing artist and who may be that sometimes I, I share some preoccupations for, you know, architectures, interiors, some sense of kind of uncanniness, you know, also like within the work. So uh, it's a big community and, uh, you know, it's, it's great to see, you know, also to be in contact with older artists mm -hmm. and younger, much younger artists also and see you know, like what interests them and sometimes also uh, affinities that you share, you know. Mm -hmm. Although like the, uh, we all have our own past and our own history mm -hmm. and we fit, you know, like or we make our decisions, you know, according to like all kinds of reasons, personal or more intellectual, mm -hmm. conceptual and stuff like that, you know, so uh, it's a mystery to mm -hmm. me also, you know, because uh, I think that things are changing, you know, there's more and more Canadian artists showing abroad, but also, it, but it's a slow, it's not like a huge quantity, you know, like, but still, uh, artists are, uh, young, I see young artists like moving to Berlin, moving to New York, to Brooklyn, to, you know, from Quebec, and coming back or sometimes staying there, you know, so uh, I think it's an important thing to do, you know, when you're young, especially, and you have like, all the energy and your life ahead of you and you feel like doing that, you know, it's a thing that uh, I didn't do myself. I did like a few stays in foreign countries, you know, for like no longer than eight months, you know. But um, those days were very, very important in my, uh, in my formation as an artist, you know. And uh, I think it's, 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 necess it's a necessity, I think. Mm -hmm.